Hey guys, I had a request to make a Verilog servo driver um, from one of my viewers. So I went ahead and spun that up um, and uh, I'd like to take you guys through how I went about doing that. Um, so what I'll do is I'll go through the main code here, um, give you a quick look at the UCF or the con constraints file, and uh, then we'll upload it to a basis two board and see how it actually works. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with that. So this is the, the top module. Um, what I would ultimately do is break this down into a lower module uh, and then have you know a control module in this module and any other module that I might need for that sort of thing. Uh, but for this, I just went ahead and left in the top module. I'll leave that up to you guys. Uh, later on, maybe I can make a video showing you how to work with modules and stuff like that uh, if you leave a comment down below. Also, guys, if you like this, this sort of stuff uh, as I go through it, don't forget to like, uh, subscribe to me if you want to see more of these, these projects. I've got a few really exciting projects coming up soon. And if you really want to keep an edge on what's going on on the channel, then uh, hit that notification bell. So the top of this code, we start out with uh, the time scale, which is mainly for the simulation environment. Uh, so we'll go ahead and skip down to the module top. Um, so inside of this are inputs and outputs as normal. I've got an input of M clock, uh, two outputs. One is for an LED, which I've just used for troubleshooting. And you can use to see that the code is actually working on your board if you're using the basis too, um, which you'll have to just change the UCF if you're not. And then I've got an output for the actual servo uh, to turn the servo on its axis. So the first thing that we need to do getting into this is figure out the timing, right? So most servos like uh, 20 millisecond turn time on a PWM sort of signal. Uh, so we, we need to figure out how we're going to get that 20 milliseconds out, right? So I'm going to use a counter to get that 20 milliseconds out. So for the basis two board, uh, without the added on clock that I have, just using the onboard clock, I'm going to use 50 megahertz, right? So what I've done is just kind of broken down the 50 megahertz into an actual time, which is 20 nanoseconds for every positive edge. Uh, then we take that and we divide what we want by that. So we've got 20 million nanoseconds here, which actually works out to be 20 milliseconds. Uh, if we divide that by 20 nanoseconds, we get 1 million. So we're going to need 1 million clock pulses to turn this thing over every time. So every single 1 million clock pulses will start over again and give the signal that we want to achieve the angle that we want out of the servo. Um, so if you go down below that, if I'm going to need 1 million clock cycles, then I'm going to need a counter that can count up to at least 1 million. Uh, so if we look at uh, 20 bits would be 2 to the 20 minus 1, which is going to equal 1,048,575. Now that's zero included, so that's from zero to that number. Um, and that'll get us up to the 1 million. So that's the biggest counter we need. So we'll need to set up a counter um, from 19 down to zero. And we'll count from zero up to 999,999 to get our million clock pulses. Um, so with this servo or with most servos, kind of a general servo uh, point of view is that the assumed maximum is around 20 milliseconds and that's for 180 degrees and the assumed minimum is zero degrees at one millisecond. We'll see further when we, when we go look at actually how it works that that doesn't work out quite right, um, but we'll talk a little bit about how to fix that in the code. So if we want to figure out two milliseconds, um, we'll figure out the same way that we had before. Um, so two milliseconds will be 100,000 times 20 nanoseconds, right? So you can just take your two milliseconds and divide it by your 20 nanoseconds like we did up here and come up with 100,000 will equal uh, 100,000 clock pulses times 20 nanoseconds will equal your two milliseconds. And the same with the assumed minimum, which would be one millisecond. We can divide that out and come up with 50,000 clock ticks uh, times 20 nanoseconds will give us our one millisecond. So that's kind of our minimum position or zero and our maximum or 180, which may not quite make those angles. Um, but if we use that as an assumption going forward, just to get started with driving this thing, uh, then our positions will be from 100,000 clock ticks down to 50,000 clock ticks. So ultimately with that, we'll have available to us 50,000 positions on this actual servo um, from zero to 180. So if we take that and we divide 180 degrees, which I actually think it's uh, 181 because your zero is included, um, but this is just kind of a estimation. So if you take your 180 divided by the 50,000, then you'll have 
a resolution of about 0 0.0036 degrees per every one of these position ticks here. So we'll use that as we move forward. Uh, so the next thing we're gonna need is, is to set up our counter, as we said. Um, we've got a register here, 19 down to zero, that's our counter. And then we'll set up a register for the actual servo. Um, just one bit is fine, because that's all we're gonna need to drive that PWM signal. Now this nest, next bit of nested code here, um, and anything with this uh, test whatever, test control registers, test control algorithm, um, with all this uh, commented stuff around it, can ultimately be yanked out unless you're going to want to use this just to drive it back and forth as I've done here. Um, like I said before, ultimately you want to come in with a control signal from outside of the module and control the thing. So these these wouldn't wind up in a final servo driver from my point of view. Uh, they're just so that I can test the actual code uh, within the FPGA and see that it works for our purposes. So what I've got here is just a control register um, that we'll be using in place of the control input. And then I have a toggle register to toggle whether it's going left or right um, from 0 to 180 or from 180 to 0. Um, so those aren't as important. That's not actually a part of the servo driver. It's just a part of the test code to control the actual driver. So the first thing that you always do when you're doing some sort of synchronous driving of anything is to have your always loop. So we've got always at positive edge in clock. So every time that clock ticks, we're going to begin. And every time that we do one single clock tick, we're going to increase that counter by one. Then we say if that counter is equal to that max that we found, which was the 999,999, then we're going to make counter back to zero. So we're just cycling up to that and then back down to zero. That'll make it turn over every single 20 milliseconds. Now, the next thing we do is we say if the counter is less than 50,000, which is our one millisecond, plus the control value, then we're going to make that servo register one. And what that's going to do is set up that PWM signal to be positive during that time when we're less than the minimum of one millisecond plus however long we want uh, for our actual control value. Uh, and then otherwise, we're going to make it zero. So the rest of that time period, that 20 millisecond time period, is going to be zero volts. Um, and that's that's basically it. That's the whole control algorithm right there uh, to control the servo. Mind you, this is a very simple setup. Uh, you'll also want to put in stuff there to guard against uh, overturning and underturning and stuff like that. Um, which isn't too hard. It's just an adage to that, right? So that's the entire code there that you could use to very minimally drive a servo, and you can add and subtract from there. Now, past that, we have our test control algorithm, and all this does is just, like I said, turn the servo from 0 to 180 and 180 back to 0. So what I'm doing is if the control register is equal to the max value that we want to do, which is the 2 milliseconds, we're going to toggle down. If the control register is equal to zero, we're going to toggle up. So we're just taking that uh, that toggle and we're making it zero to transition from 180 to zero. We're making it one to transition from zero to 180 degrees. Then we're just going to use if the counter is at zero, then we're going to want to increase or decrease our control. And basically all I'm doing is waiting that, that entire period, that entire 20 milliseconds, before I actually change the control bit again. And you could change this timing up if you wanted to to match uh, how fast your servo turns with whatever forces against it and stuff like that. Um, so basically, if the counter is zero, if toggle is zero, then we're gonna just reduce the control value. If toggle is one, we're gonna increase the control value. Now you can set this to one and it's gonna move really slow. Um, you can set it to 1000 as I've done here. It's a pretty good pace, pretty good clip, which you'll see here in a second. Um, you could even set it to 2000, which I've done, and, and my servo can handle that, um, probably could handle faster. Uh, you can kind of look at the limits, you can time it, you know, you can use all sorts of constructs to figure out uh, how fast your servo drives and how fast you want to drive it. Um, I always try to stay a little bit below any absolute max on anything. Um, so I would keep that in mind. But so as I said before, this is just a test control algorithm. Uh, everything in here could be wiped out. And uh, you could just import a, an actual control signal, and you're good to go. Um, so after that, I in the always loop. Um, so mind you, if you're not using this uh, test control algorithm, all you would have was this uh, always loop with begin and this short bit of code here, and then end. And what I've done past that, um, obviously you're gonna have to assign the servo to servo reg. So the output we're gonna set equal to 
our actual servo register so that it outputs into the actual line so we can turn the servo. Um, the other thing that I have here is that I'm using one of the LEDs to troubleshoot the board to see that it's working properly. Um, so I'm just setting that to toggle so I can see that uh, when that light turns off, that means it should be going from 180 to zero. And when the light turns on, it should be going from zero to 180. Uh, now I actually have an O-scope that we're gonna hook up and look at this, but if you don't, that'll help you out a lot, I think. Um, so that's, that's all the code there. Uh, we end the module and that's it. So let's go ahead and look at the UCF for it. Our constraints file is very minimal. I'll upload this to GitHub as well. Uh, so you've got your M clock because you're gonna have to import the M clock. Um, now you could change this to your U clock if you've got your own clock or something on the board. Uh, if you've got a different board, then the basis too, you're gonna have to pull down a different UCF file, but you can just kind of comment out and use whatever uh, your board would need for what port you're trying to use. Uh, all the rest of this that's on the board, I've got commented out, except for of course the LED that we talked about. Um, which is at location M5. And I made sure that uh, LED here is the same exact, same spelling, same case sensitivity as the LED here. Um, we go down through here, and the only other thing I have is the one port that I'm pulling out of, which is B2 on my basis 2 board. Um, all I did was just take out the comment here. Actually, all I did was add comments everywhere where there was something that I wasn't using, and I left these uncommented. Uh, so that's pretty straightforward and easy, guys. Uh, let's go ahead and, and program this up to the Basis 2 board, and we'll give a look at it uh, as it's running. If you need help doing that sort of thing, programming up to the Basis board and stuff like that, then check out a video I've got linked below, and I'll try to put a card up, which is my spinning up video where I spin up the Basis 2. I'll be doing more of those videos soon. I've actually got a really exciting board uh, in the mail this last week that I hope to spin up as well. Um, so don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell um, so you can see those as I pull them up. So let's go ahead and look at that uh, Basis 2 board. So here's the uh, Basis 2 hooked up. Um, what I've done is I've run the servo motor to a 5 volt power supply on one of the leads as shown. I'll leave a picture on how to wire that up. I've also got the oscilloscope hooked up to the data pin. Um, so basically, I'm just running 5 volts to the 5 volt pin, ground to ground, ground to everything, right? So the ground on the servo needs to match the ground on the basis 2, needs to match the ground on the power supply. And I got my oscope probe run to the basis 2 ground and to the data line of the servo. So let me go ahead and turn this guy on. And you see that you're getting movement out of the servo. Let me make the line a little darker for you guys. What you can see right here, this is a two millisecond uh, time scale. If I zoom in here, you can see that that's moving from one millisecond to two milliseconds back and forth, uh, just as we had hoped. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is zoom out so that you can see the, the whole PWM. Um, and I'll scoot that over so we can see at least two time periods here. So that's five milliseconds per division. So if we count each division, we've got uh, five, 10, 15, 20. So that's our 20 millisecond mark. So basically that's repeating every 20 milliseconds and it's changing the size of the PWM signal um, every time it goes through and repeats the PWM. Uh, so yeah, what we've got is the movement on the servo. Um, what I wanna do here, let me see if I can't zoom in a bit and bring the servo into range. So what you can see is the servo isn't actually getting a full zero to 180 degrees. It actually looks like 90 degrees to me. Um, so you can stretch that out. Um, what you really wanna do is play around with the zero part um, and see where that stops. So what you wanna do, let me put this back down. What you wanna do if, so what you want to do is move uh, the one millisecond down until you find what the actual zero point of the servo is. Um, so you kind of drag that down until when you're dragging it down, it doesn't move anymore. And that's where you know your zero point is. And I go above that just a little bit and do the same thing with the positive end. Increase that PWM until the servo doesn't move past that anymore. And you can, instead of having it sweep back and forth, just have it sweep to that spot. See if it keeps moving forward. When it stops moving forward, 
that means you've reached the end and, and you want to set just short of that to make your full sweep from zero to 180 degrees. So I hope this video has been useful to you guys. Uh, if you need any help, please comment down below. If there's something you'd like me to go further into um, or you'd like more details on, let me know as well. If you like these videos and you wanna see more, subscribe if you wanna be notified when they come on, hit that notification bell and uh, give me a thumbs up guys for the videos that I'm doing. Um, just to give you a hint, it's a board that's coming up. Uh, there you go. Hopefully we'll spin that up, do a board spin up on that one soon. Uh, so hit that notification bell, guys. Uh, have a great day, and don't forget to love well.